Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I have a very exciting guest for us today because we're going to be talking about a new product on the market that can help improve your mobility. Dr. Petra Rose is a physical therapist who works with the company GoZine. Zine is a newer company that launched a product within the last year or so. And this is a product that allows you to go from a seated position where you can be pushed as if you're sitting in a wheelchair and also be used as a rollator so you can be walking upright. Now, there is another product that I'm aware of that you can use as a wheelchair and as a rollator, but it requires that you get out of the wheelchair in order to move things around and transition it into a rollator. The zine is completely different. In the zine, you're able to go from sitting to standing with just the push of a button in just a few seconds. I've never seen anything like it before, and I'm really excited for you guys to learn about it. On this episode, Dr. Petra Rose shares with us exactly what the zine is, how it works, and who it's for. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, I am recording this as a YouTube video as well. So if you are a visual learner like me and you want to actually see the zine and see how Dr. Petra is using it, go over to my YouTube page and find it there. I'll also link it into the show notes. Hello, Petra. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Gretchen. It's lovely to to meet you. And I'm excited to share the zine with your community. Me too. I'm always so excited anytime there's really any tool or product that comes out. But I'm super excited about this one because it seems to be completely innovative, like something that I don't think there's another version like this out there. So I'm really excited to get into that. But before we do, I would like to ask you a question from my interview deck to our listeners get to know you a bit better. Is that okay with you? Sounds good. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to shuffle over here. <laughs> Your question is, if you were a boss of many, would you want them to fear you or love you? Oh, that's a, I definitely would not want them to fear me. Yeah. Um, I would want to lead by example and I would definitely prefer them to love me, but not to the detriment of what we're trying to accomplish, I guess. Everyone working towards a common goal and be, and showing the, the love for whatever it is that we're doing and, and for them to respect where I'm coming from with things and have a collabor- collaborative relationship and so, yeah, definitely on the, I would, I would go on the, I would want the people to love me, not fear me. Yeah. yeah. Same fear. Mm-hmm. Just, that just sounds scary. And like, it would yeah. not be conducive to a good work environment. No, definitely not. I think you have more people leaving in situations like that. And then you're just constantly having to figure, teach everybody everything new again. So. Right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Sure. So I would like to first chat about what zine is. I'm going to assume that most people might not know at all what this is. So let's start just with the very basics. What is zine and how did this idea come about? Thank That's a great question. It's a fantastic place to start. So the zine, which I am sitting on here, and for those that are listening, obviously can't see it, but the zine, it's a brand new mobility device. Our inventor or co-inventor, Garrett Brown, He invented the Steadicam years ago. So any movies that you've seen, the Rocky movies, the some of the Star Wars movies, that it's a stable but moving picture. He was the one that invented this way to lift heavy camera equipment so you could be mobile with it and still get a stable shot. That same technology was applied to sky cams, fly cams, dive cams. So same idea, all different settings and was also used in engineering and industrial type settings to lift this heavy equipment. So Garrett, as his parents about 10 years ago, his parents were in their 90s and were declining. They lived in a retirement community not far from where we're headquartered here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Garrett's a very tall man. Both of his parents were very tall people. And suddenly they went from standing very tall, very erect and walking about. And now they're either hunched over a walker or sitting down in a wheelchair and craning their neck to look up at people. You know, all of those things that go along with declining mobility. So the brainchild then was, okay, I've 
been able to lift camera equipment and many other things. Let's figure out how to lift a person. He was looking to see there's got to be something better than a walker or a wheelchair. And as you mentioned, Gretchen, there really isn't. There's nothing really between those two things. There's lots of different variety of walker and lots of different variety of wheelchair but there's nothing really in between. So he wanted to figure out a way to help keep people on their feet, keep them standing more erect, not getting into that hunched posture, give their shoulders a break, and just keep them on their legs longer just for all of the health benefits that you can get from being in a standing position. The bone density, so your bones are going to be stronger, your vasculature is going to be better, your breathing and digestion are all going to be better, and then even, you know, kind of the most important, the mental health aspect of it, of being at your own eye level, not looking up at people, not having people speaking literally over your head when you're sitting down. There's so many, as you just touched on so many benefits to standing up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as physical therapists, you know, there's so many exercises too. Not only is it functional throughout the day, but you could do seated exercises and standing exercises. Yes. And if you didn't have that assistance helping you navigate between those two different settings, Mm -hmm. you might be excluded from that. You might only do one and most likely the seated exercises. So I, I think my favorite thing about the zine is that it does transition from standing to sitting. I mm-hmm. do know of a bike that allows you to sit up at a taller height and mm-hmm. walk from there, but it doesn't adjust at all. It's not like you can sit down as in an actual seat with back mm-hmm. support and then right. also fully stand up. So again, right. I just, this is so, so brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you explain a bit about how it works? Because especially for those that can't see you, but if they can't see you, that's even better. But how does it work if someone doesn't know what this looks like right now? Sure. So the best description I can give when it's in a seated position, the zine looks like it looks like a wheelchair with a big bicycle seat for the seat. Okay. So it looks very similar to a wheelchair. The footprint of it is roughly the same as a standard wheelchair. Okay. And what happens though is there are two gas springs under the seat that provide propulsion to move between sitting and standing. So there are no batteries, no motor. You don't need to plug anything in. You don't need to charge anything. You don't need to worry that the battery is going to die. And now where do I get a replacement? These two gas springs have like an infinite number of extensions on them. So as long as you're using it on a relatively regular basis, then you're exercising the gas springs and they're going to keep working. There are levers on our armrests that those are the levers that you squeeze to release the lift mechanism. When you squeeze the lever, what happens is that it pulls a pin out of a hole that's on a numbered strut. And the numbers on that strut are associated with a hole that the seat can then stop at. So when they squeeze the levers, the pin pulls back, the gas spring then helps to either lift up or lower down. And whenever you let go of the levers, it's going to stop at whatever level you've stopped at. We have a couple settings so that we're making sure that we're lifting the right amount and lifting to the right height. So there are five different lift settings. We can lift someone anywhere between 100 and 250 pounds. We do have plans to go both larger and smaller. And then we have what's called the max height car that we set that. So it's only going to allow the seat to go to the correct height. And the correct height that we look for on the individual is what's called the standover height. It's the ground to groin distance in a standing position. And so we have the seat lift you up to the point where you're standing on flat feet and standing up tall, but not lifting you off your feet. Okay. So does someone need to measure that themselves? Or is that something, do you guys work with each person who has one? How does that work? Zines can be ordered directly through our website. So in order to even put a zine into your shopping cart, you would need to provide what your weight is so that we can set the amount of lift that it's going to give, as well as your standover height. And we do provide direction on the website. The primary video that's on our website is showing someone, and this is how you would measure to to set a seat height for a bicycle that you actually like back up to a wall and slide a book up between your legs. And then you mark the spine of the book on the wall and measure that distance. Not necessarily something that the everyday person who's needing a mobility device can do. We do have special tape measures that we can send out to people that there's a foot plate. I had one. 
I don't know what I just did with it. Anyway, there's a foot plate. And so if you are able to stand, you can put that on the ground and then slide up and kind of pinch right where you meet the groin. And then you can see what the number is. We also say it's really the same as what your inseam is, but plus that extra distance from the end of the pant leg to the floor in the shoes that you would be wearing most often. So we try to give you a couple different ways to get that measurement. So that when you do order a zine, you put those two items in. There are a couple other things you get to pick as well. And then it allows you to put it into a cart to then move forward with the purchase. Gotcha. I I like that there's lots of different ways to measure that. I've actually never heard that one before with the putting a book between your legs, but I can see how that would work. Yeah. Yeah. If you're able to stand, it works well for, you know, even just if, if it's completely that's out of the question. If they have somebody that if the person that wants to purchase one, they have a caregiver coming in, a family member, you can measure it lying down in bed, just making sure that you're measuring from, you know, right at the groin, right at the apex of the legs and down all the way to the heel and making sure you've got the right, you know, if you've got a, a shoe that has a lift on it, then including that amount of distance as well. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. then if someone does, let's say they, they purchase it, they take those mm-hmm. measurements, they put all that in two questions. I'm going to ask both now. So I don't forget one, how does it arrive? Is it all put together or do you need to put things together? And two, how much does it weigh? Is it tricky to get it out of a box and actually using it? All excellent questions. So to answer the first one, the zine arrives fully assembled. It arrives fully assembled and set to your, the specifications that you sent to us. So as long as you didn't say, well, I'm 220 pounds, but I'm going to tell them I'm only 200, you know, as long as you tell us the right weight and you're close to the right standover height, it's going to be set as soon as you open it up out of the box, it's going to be ready to go for you. Regarding the weight, the zine weighs about 42 pounds. It does come, it does fold. So the there are two red handles. And again, for those that can't see this, I'll describe it a little bit. There's one hand red handle that goes across the rear frame of the zine that when I pull up on that, there's also a red handle on the side of the seat. I pull up on that as well. It's going to start sliding together. Okay. Right now I have the handlebars extended so I can rotate those back. Those will fold back out of the way as well. And it's going to close when it is folded, completely folded up. It's about 11 inches wide. We have three Velcro straps on the zine. There's one that goes right across the front. It's actually the base of the handlebars where this Velcro strap is. And that strap alone is going to help keep the zine together. So when you go to pick it up, it's not trying to open up on you. Okay. So as I said, it is 42 pounds. When it arrives, the way the box is constructed, there's a large piece of the box that goes over top. And then the zine is actually sitting in a cradle. So the the wheels are floating. It's It's being transported on the base of the aluminum frame, not on its wheels. Okay. And so if you have the ability to either by yourself, lift it up and out of the cradle, or you have a second person, you, we, we have a video demonstrating a team lift that one person's at the back, the other's at the front, and you lift it up and out of the cradle. If you're by yourself and that's not realistic, then you another suggestion is to tilt the zine onto its back. Okay, when it's in the cradle, it's pretty easy to tilt because the wheels aren't going anywhere. But you would tilt it back, you would pull the cradle off the bottom. And then I like to just put my foot at the wheel. So now I'm going to tilt back up over my foot, essentially, back onto its feet. So again, you do need to have some strength, some mobility to do that on your own. But if maybe a caregiver, a loved one is unboxing it for you, maybe they're able to do that if you're not able to do it yourself. Absolutely. And for those that can't see, and by the way, we're going to be putting this on YouTube. So if you're listening, you're like, oh, I wish I could see this Go over to the <laughs> page and you'll be able to see it there. But for those that can't see it right now, it folds up just mm-hmm. as well as what a rollator looks like it folds up to. It looks very similar to that distance. Mm-hmm. It, it is. It's pretty similar. And even just the, the size of it in general. So the front to back distance is a little bit bigger than a rollator. I think the thing that I find people have that's most challenging for them is the zine is behind you when you're using it, where a rollator is in front of you. So you can very easily see where you're going with it, right? So when you first get on the zine, the trick is figuring out 
or, you know, remembering that you have something behind you now and that when you go to make, when you go to turn a corner, don't turn that corner quite as sharp as you might with your rollator because you would get your rollator around the corner and then you just follow right behind it. Now you need to get yourself around the corner and remember that you've got this following you too. But size wise, if, if I were to put a rollator right next to the zine, then it's really, you know, the front, my front wheels are the, the extra amount of distance that the, z- the zine takes up. But in the zine, and I know that as a therapist, I'm always telling everybody with their walkers to make sure they stay inside the walker, right? The zine, if you're using it the right way, you should be positioned in the middle of it. So for those that aren't seeing this on video, my feet are very close to the center of this device. They're behind the wheels. I do have, you know, about half of it is behind me. And when I bring my handlebars forward, about, you know, a little bit less is in front of me than is behind me. But this is, I'm pretty well centered in this versus a walker. If I, you know, on a walker, we're usually standing behind it, right? And then leaning forward to it. So if we're at the right height and the right positioning on the zine, then you shouldn't have to be leaning forward at all. It's going to give you support where you need it. So that's where you're not going to have that weight bearing through your shoulders. You can put as much weight down through the handlebars as you need to. But as you get more and more comfortable with it and confident with it, you're able to back that weight off and be able to do things with your hands that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do if you were using a walker. Yeah. And I actually had the privilege of working with one of my one-on-one clients virtually who has one. And so I've been able to see her use it and we created certain exercises that she can do sitting, but I also like to implement exercises throughout the day. So I was telling her, you know, when possible, move it to the standing setting and practice this exercise Mm -hmm. around your home. And it was really nice for her to be able to have that possibility because she was saying that before using the zine, she would have to wait until someone came home and in order to safely get up and do those, those chores, those activities. Yeah. Can you explain who this is designed for? Like, is there a certain person or certain capabilities or abilities or disability that, that should be thinking that this might be the best fit for them? Sure. So we've avoided talking any specific diagnoses. And I know, you know, I think the majority of people that are listening to this podcast probably, you know, probably have MS, have a loved one with MS. But yes, it can be beneficial for someone with MS, depending on where they are in the progression of the disease. More importantly, as I said, we're not talking diagnosis specific. We've been talking more to the deficits that people end up having. So we're looking at folks that have strength, balance, or endurance trouble. So as long as you still have some ability to stand up, we like to say you're able to get to your feet and you're able to walk maybe 10 feet with or without a device. Even for people that maybe can't do that, if they've at least been weight bearing, so they haven't taken a step in a while, but they're using a standing frame or they're using something to allow them to get weight bearing through their legs and they know how to be able to straighten up on their legs, they still have some of that musculature control. The person that if they're sitting in a chair, are they able to kick their leg out straight in the therapy world, a long arc quad, all right, they're able to kick the leg out straight and they've got a good, strong thigh muscle there. If you're able to do those types of things, then the zine might be useful for you. For someone that it's been multiple years since they've been standing, it doesn't mean that the zine won't work, but it's kind of looking at it as a therapy tool first and using it to allow you, as you just said, Gretchen, allowing you to improve your strength, to use it to help you to exercise and work up to eventually being able to be independent with it. The original design and intention was to keep people independent and mobile longer. As I mentioned, our original target audience was the declining elderly population. That's who Garrett was looking at. That's, you know, that's who his parents were. And it was what it's his parents, his parents, friends. And he's saying, there's got to be something better. What we have found is while that is one group of people that might benefit from it. There are many other people of all ages with all different disease processes happening that could benefit from this. As long as you have a little bit, you know, some strength to be able to get up and the ability to propel with your legs, then the zine could be beneficial for you. So that's something I didn't mention, 
when I was going over how does it work, what does it do? I mentioned how it helps you to get up to standing. When you are in the zine, there is a seat belt. And I mentioned that the, the feet has a bicycle type design. So when I'm in the zine the right way, then the prow of the seat is just between my legs. I've got the seat belt on and I'm going to make sure that it's snug. There are retractors on this seat belt. The purpose of the retractors is I want it to be snug when I'm standing, but when I sit back, I don't want it dangling all the way down to my knees, right? So by having those retractors, it sits back with me. It's not holding me into the seat. You know, it's, it's not a really a restraint. It's just there. The purpose of it is when I'm walking, by having that seat belt, it's going to allow me to be more hands-free. I don't need to have my hands on the zine to keep it coming with me. It's also going to help prevent falls that between the seatbelt and the prow of the seat, if I should lose my balance, it's going to help to catch me. Okay. And it doesn't matter which direction I go to. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I just said that's really cool for those that can see. So she's basically just pretended she fell and so her feet are off the ground and it completely holds her body weight. That's mm -hmm. so, so helpful. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I think one reason I'm so excited about this is because of, of course, the mobility aspect, but also the fact that you can use it to help as therapy, as rehab. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite exercises, as silly as it sounds, is standing, just mm -hmm. practice standing with good posture, stay there for as long as you can, because a lot of my clients are working on improving their walking and their mobility. Mm -hmm. But if you can't stand right. for even 30 seconds, you know, that's the right. first step. And yes. this is something that could help you get to that first step and then move further on. Exactly. Exactly. And that's something we actually have a handful of exercises on our website that we've shared of here's some exercises you can do in the zine, just very basic. One of them is standing and standing with good posture that, you know, you see the side shot and our, our gentleman that is demonstrating who has been using a zine has very bad back, has had multiple back surgeries. So he's got this very hunched forward posture and we walk through the steps of, okay, get your feet underneath you standing up tall on your legs roll those shoulders back, tuck the chin back. So you're getting into that tall posture and then just standing there. And whether you're, you know, standing or then you move on to doing a march in that standing position, doing sidestepping because all four wheels are on casters, you can move in any direction. So you can help to, that's going to help to strengthen the, the buttocks muscles. Standing, I agree with you, fantastic thing to do just to be able to stand for whatever period of time getting to standing, that sit to stand motion is very useful in the zine as well, that you can either hold on to the lift mechanism. Direction that I give everyone is back yourself up to a wall first, lock your brakes so you're immobilizing yourself as much as possible. And then you can either hold on to the lift mechanism and now you can just practice going up and down or Every zine comes with a pair of shipping pins, which has an elastic on it. So you could wrap that elastic around the lift mechanism. You could just grab a rubber band. Anything will work to hold that open. And in doing that now, you don't need to hold it with your hands and you can just focus on that leg strengthening exercise. And even though the seat is helping you, your legs are still controlling it. Right. It seems like something that would be fantastic for using all around the house, but specifically in the kitchen. Yeah. I have so many clients who they want to stand, whether it's to reach something or, or to cook something, but then they get tired and they want to sit down. Mm -hmm. And so with this, you could just sit down, stir what you need to stir, stand up and cook, or you could just go back and forth so easily. Exactly. Yeah. And you can, you can sit at any level. So, you know, yeah. at my full standing height, if I just kind of rest my weight back, I'm carrying a lot of weight through the groin, not the most comfortable thing, right? But if I lower down just a little bit, now I can scoot back a little bit further. The weight's being carried through my backside now. I can move my handlebars out of the way, which is going to allow me to pull right up to my counter. I've got a counter here behind me. So I can pull right up to the counter. And as you said, if I'm cooking, if I'm doing the dishes, if I need to reach something from a high cabinet, being on here, being at that full standing height, and, you know, maybe I have one of my handlebars out or I have my hand on the counter and now I'm able to reach where if I were using a walker, I might not be able to get to that high of a position. Right. right. And may not feel comfortable taking both hands off the walker to try to reach in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's an important point, too, that you can sit 
at any level. It's not just yes. sitting and standing. It's any, anywhere within that range. Yep. How would this work if you tried to fit it in a car? I have a decent amount of clients who like to drive or have someone drive them to a park or somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then, then they get out and walk there. Does this yep. fit into a car easily? It does. It does. It does. Uh, it's about the same size folded as a standard wheelchair. Thinking about rollators, the rollator is going to be not quite as wide as the zine when it's folded up, but it is taller. So if you're able to put a rollator into the trunk of your car, you're probably going to be able to get the zine in. In the folded position, it's 11 inches wide when it's completely folded up. It's with the handlebars folded back, it's 34 inches from front to back, and it's 38 inches when you have the seat at the lowest position. It is possible to fold with the seat at any height, but the higher the seat is, the higher this side is than when it's folded up, okay? So yeah, you can definitely load it in and out of the trunk of the car, depending on your vehicle. It might work well in the trunk. It might be better to put it behind this, you know, in the second row of seats instead, and something, the, the zine is 42 pounds. That was something we talked about earlier. We know that's that might be a little heavy for some people to be lifting in and out of the trunk of a car. We've created a trunk loading tool, which is essentially like a big sheet that hooks into the back of the car. The sheet comes out, drapes over the bumper of the trunk. So it's going to protect the paint job, both on your car and on the zine. And then there's this long strap that when you lift up on the strap, it's creating a pulley system in the trunk of your car. So it feels like you're lifting about 20 pounds instead of 40. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like I, I do have a lot of clients who usually will either go with their spouse or on their own, a, a decent amount who will be traveling on their own. And one mm-hmm. reason I just talked to a client the other day, and one of her biggest goals is to have enough upper body strength to lift her rollator in and out of her car. Because at this Mm -hmm. point she doesn't leave her home because she can't lift it in and out. So that feature is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, I mean, especially in comparison with a rollator, this is definitely heavier than that. And we knew that, especially with the original, the original target population being an elderly person, either that individual or their caregiver spouse, whomever it is, may also be elderly and may not have the strength to lift 42 pounds. We've explored trying to make the zine itself lighter and it just isn't a practical thing. My feeling on that too is if we do go any lighter, we're going to lose some of the inherent stability that we have. So are we going to be able to, you know, Superman fly on the zine and it not tip over or not? The engineers say, yes, we would be able to, but. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm on your side. I feel like that that would make me feel like we other features of it might not be as great, but you never know till you try. Maybe develop exactly. one and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> right. Right. That's awesome. Well, this has been so great. And again, we're going to post this as a YouTube video so you guys can see it all, but are there any resources or places that you want to guide people to, to learn more about it or even purchase one or see all of the information? Sure. Yeah. The the best place to learn about it is on our website, which is gozine.com. And the zine is on there. The trunk loader that I mentioned is one of our accessories. We've got a couple other accessories there now, and there will be more coming. So the website's a great place to learn about it. Emailing us, is our email, super easy, info at gozine.com. Send us an email, reach out, you know, we're happy to answer your questions. Our customer service team is fantastic and very hands-on and we'll, we'll make sure we answer all the questions that you have. And we, we are on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook as well. So just other places to see actual people using zines. When you look at our website, the very first video, and it's soon to be changed, but the very first video is actors using the zine. We've been on the market a little bit more than a year. So when we were coming to market, we needed to have a website and we needed to have people on it, but it wasn't, they weren't actual users, but the zine page itself has actual people using, you know, people that do have some type of disability using the zine. Our Instagram and Facebook pages, as I mentioned, there's loads of videos of people that have shared, you know, allowed us to video them while they're using it or shared their own stories with us too, as they've had their zines and are using them. So. 
That's great. And I'll put all those links and your email and everything in the show notes. So if anyone is listening right now, but you want to come back to it later to grab those or click those, definitely check that out. And I'll put the YouTube when that is post, I'll put the YouTube video link here as well in the show notes so that you can easily navigate that way. And one thing that you offer to our Zoom calls for demos, right? Can you explain a bit about that? Yeah. So just like we're meeting right now. So for those of you that are seeing this on YouTube, we can do a Zoom session with you where myself or one of our team members will provide a demonstration for you. We like to be able to see you on the call as well, if that's possible. And that way we can kind of see how you're moving around a little bit and be able to kind of guide you a little bit better whether or not the zine would work for you. So Zoom sessions are available on our website. It's says zine demo and you would click there and there's a couple different options. If you wanted to specifically meet with a physical therapist, you had multiple medical questions. There's one physical therapist supported zine sessions, zoom sessions, and that would be me that you'd be talking to. Otherwise there's, it would be one of our other team member, potentially one of our other team members. And we do also offer in-person demos here at our headquarters in Westchester. And we have a growing list of distributor partners that we're working with. So all of that is on our website and that the distributor partners, it's a growing list. So if you're looking for something local, there might be something or reach out to us and we can try to connect you if there is someone local to you. I love that. I'm such a visual learner. So to have someone personally talk to me about it and look at it and make sure everything is going well, I think is such a key component. Yes, definitely. I'm with you on that too. I'm I need yeah. to see it, touch it, feel it, do all of it. Yes. <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much. This has been so exciting. Just a learning that it exists, like just knowing that there's something out there that can actually work in this way can be so huge. And now seeing it and understanding it a bit more is so helpful. And I think it'll be really helpful for a lot of our listeners too. So thank you so much for your time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us to and to learn more about it. And I'm so excited to hear that you do have a client that is using a zine as well. I I wasn't aware of that. That's fantastic. I'm happy that they're experiencing a good, you know, having a good experience with it and connecting with you and, and able to make more out of it than, than just popping it out of the box and moving around with it, doing more with it too. Absolutely. Yeah. She's one of our missing link members and she's been posting in our accountability group almost weekly saying, you guys need to get this. She's like a raving fan. She is absolutely loving it. Awesome. Fantastic. (laughs) 